Awesome. So uh, we just have folks uh, join in as and when uh, they can. But uh, for those of you who are already here, uh, I'll just quickly introduce you guys to uh, Pari, who's going to be our speaker today. Uh, Pari has been a creator at Pepper for a year now. Uh, and she's been in the content marketing industry for five years. Uh, she's also head, uh, head the content uh, vertical for an Indian storytelling platform. And she's a chartered accountant by profession. So she spearheads all the BFSI, finance, um, uh, cryptocurrency related projects at uh, Pepper. And we're really proud to have her as part of the system. Um, we've also just partnered with ADP List uh, to kind of get our creators to host these sessions to enrich learners out there about different topics related to content. Uh, so I'm really glad to have you guys on board and I hope we can make this a fun session. Uh, we'll have a Q&A at the end of the session. So please stick around for any questions related to content marketing that you might have. Um, and yeah, Pari will be uh, presenting. Uh, she has a lovely presentation. She's uh, uh, gotten ready for all of you and she has some really, really nice insights to share. So please stick around. And uh, yeah, we'll address your questions at the end. Um, should we dive right in? Mariam, do you want to wait for a bit for more people to join in? We're good? Okay, awesome. Pari, over to you. Thank you so much, Tanya. It's been an honor um, associating with Pepper and now with ADP List as well. Thank you for this really warm introduction. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Pari. Uh, and today we'll be going through running the show with content marketing. And do you guys know why I love content the most? It's because words have the power of expressing and communicating so beautifully. And they can give context to any form of communication. Uh, so say you have an amazing product or an amazing service that you're offering. But until you tell your potential customers or your potential investors how great your product is, they won't know. And without effective communication with your customers, with your stakeholders, that can be your investors or your employees, uh, a business cannot grow continuously. Uh, so that, that here's where content comes into the picture and completely runs the entire show. So if you want to earn the trust of all of these stakeholders, then you will need content. Uh, so during this session, we'll be going through uh, the step-by-step -step practical approach towards developing an effective content marketing strategy. Uh, we will explore different examples across B2B and B2C industries and see how content can stitch so easily into any type of client. Um, so now, I think all of you might be having that one brand that you really love, right? Your, your favorite brand and you love the marketing and you can relate to it. Uh, so if you go deeper into the marketing of this uh, entire brand, then you'll understand that content marketing cannot be seen just from the surface. Uh, it, it comes uh, with the design, it comes with a lot of uh, paid marketing efforts as well. But when you look at content marketing, it has the potential of giving the information to your clients, uh, giving the information to the customers that can bring them to you and that can convert them into paying clients as well. So um, when you look at a business and see how they distribute the content, that's where you understand how they are keeping their customers hooked. So for here, uh, for this presentation, I've taken HubSpot as an example. And from a macro perspective, I've condensed uh, three reasons why HubSpot has aced content marketing strategy. So let's go over these. The very first reason is that HubSpot identifies its consumers' needs and gives them a value addition. So once you know who your target audience is, you can add value to them and that's when they'll respect you. That's when they'll uh, stay hooked to your product or your service. And that's when you can relate to them. Uh, and the next thing is that they've established credibility as well as they give high quality content all the time. And they've used different mediums of communication. So HubSpot is primarily uh, an automated software which generates inbound leads. Uh, and so it's, I mean, the target audience for HubSpot naturally will be mid-sized firms or small firms who are looking at, uh, you know, generating leads and uh, they want inbound leads to come in. But then HubSpot realized that most of their clients are stuck in an endless loop of cold calling that is externally, you know, going out and trying to get customers in. Uh, 
So uh, they couldn't get people to opt for this inbound marketing of automated platform of theirs because people didn't even know how they can use inbound marketing strategies. So what they started was their HubSpot blog where they open sourced content for their target audience, which is marketing uh, managers and for small business owners or mid-sized business owners uh, to teach them how inbound marketing strategies can play out. Right? And that is how uh, they got people hooked onto their platform. And automatically, when someone is going through, like if they're trying to adopt inbound marketing strategies, they would want something automated. And that's how they promoted their product. Uh, so HubSpot, of course, they gave a lot of value addition and they gave high quality, up-to-date content, which is the underlying factor here. Because if it's not, if it wasn't up-to-date, if it was a one-time thing, then people would lose touch and fall out uh, eventually. All of these points are something that we'll be distributing and discussing. But before we jump into that, uh, I would really like to share the relevance of content marketing in today's world because I think this is something that I've put together based on the stats and I think this is, these are beautiful stats to help us all understand how important content marketing really is today. Uh, so the first thing is that 66% of marketers on an uh, increasing basis use content marketing and especially if they see a positive result. So if content marketing is giving positive results, they're going to opt for more and more uh, content marketing efforts. And that this could be a great space that means that it's consistently growing as long as they're promising leads and ROIs. And 90% of marketers continue to invest in content marketing even today. Which uh, this essentially means that uh, coming up with customized content marketing strategies for brands, the demand is really, really big out there. Uh, to get an insight into the returns that content marketing can give, these are some of the historic um, stats that I've taken here, which is from 2021 as well. So this is a uh, post pandemic period. Uh, a lot of these leads uh, and a lot of these stats, they came up with the conclusion that content marketing can give three times more results when compared to your other marketing efforts, which are your outbound marketing efforts. And 62% less amount is spent through content marketing, which is why people really love content marketing and as a marketing strategy. And 92% B2C marketers, they develop an, uh, they develop a content marketing strategy specifically for their brand. So this means that almost all of the B2C marketing trusts that content marketing is the way to go. And 75% um, of them are outsourced. So if any one of us is looking for a career in content marketing as an independent or a freelancer or an independent agency, this is very, very, uh, this is a very lucrative market. So um, now let's talk about a step-by-step -step plan and the components that form a content marketing strategy. The first one is defining your goals. Uh, when you define your goals, and what I mean by defining your goals is documenting the end result, uh, which you wish to see through your marketing efforts. Uh, for, for this particular point, we have to look at things from the business's perspective. Uh, over the course of all of these points, I'll be explaining how you have to look at it, uh, whether you have to look at it from a business's perspective, whether you have to look at it from a customer's perspective. But these are this is the first of four steps that I've divided the entire content marketing strategy plan into. So the first one, defining your goals is the end result. And uh, this could this has to be from your business's perspective. So whether it is your own business or your client's business, you have to put yourself in the shoes of the business and then look at this. So having clearly defined goals, it helps marketers tie each individual campaign to preset goals. And it helps create more focused plans and well-aligned well efforts. So most people think that uh, defining goals can just be, you know, setting milestones that I want these many followers or um, I want uh, X number of customers. These are good ways to start, but this is not the only thing that is defining goals. So what I've done here is there are three questions which you need to ask yourself when you are documenting your goals. The first question would be, what do I want my customer to know with the content that I'm sharing? So what do I want my customer to do with the information that I give through the content? Now, um, this can mean that, you know, um, for example, if you're a fashion designer, you will want customers to head over to your store or your website, so your online store, uh, and take a look at your collection. That's what you want them to do at the end. Uh, and as an organic food brand, you will want your customers to switch to a healthier option. Uh, one of my clients, they had a software through which uh, other businesses could purchase virtual numbers, which would enhance their entire customer support system. So this is an example of a B2B collaboration. 
uh, where you're selling to another business and not to a customer. So they wanted customers to opt for a demo so that they can uh, show all of their features practically before anyone makes a purchase. Uh, so these, these are basically the actions that you want your customer to take while they interact with your product. This is what you have to document over here. So this is the first question that you'll ask yourself. Um, the, this is the final interaction as well. So before you hand over the customers to the sales team, this is the last point as a marketer that where you'll uh, you know, use your customer and you can convert them into a paying client. Uh, the next question that you'll ask yourself is how do I want my customers to perceive my business? This is basically how you want to project your business and it is very important to create a brand identity. So your brand identity is a reflection of how you want your customers to uh, perceive your business and something you can steer in the right direction as long as you have it pre-documented. So you want to establish yourself as a thought leader or maybe an expert because you are uh, giving out a course or you are giving some sort of training. So you will have to put yourself in that position that yes, I know what I'm saying. And um, your, so your content marketing strategy here should be that you need to be a little more authoritative, you need to be relevant, you need to have up to date uh, data, something that's not commonly available, and you need to give some sort of value addition to anyone who wants to opt for your course. Uh, now, if you want to feel, uh, if you want your customers to feel emotionally connected to your brand, then you'll have to make your content more humanized. For example, um, Spotify, one of the very popular brands, they use a very friendly and a very casual approach uh, because they want users uh, to look at Spotify as the go-to mu music platform and their audience is so vast, it can be anyone. So they don't want to be formal. They don't want to um, look like, you know, they're, they're being very... Um, they're only for the elite. They want to be very friendly and very approachable. At the same time, if you take a look at Nike, Nike inspires its customers and uh, they want to be perceived as the inspirational brand and the most reliable brand for passionate athletes, which is why you won't see a lot of friendly content there, but you'll see a lot of inspiring content. So how you want your brand to perceive your business is definitely something that you need to document as one of the goals. Now, the last question that you need to ask yourself is how you will measure the success of your marketing efforts. Usually, um, while we are defining goals, this is the only question that we end up asking ourselves, whereas the other two questions are actually even more important than this one. Uh, so this can be in a wide range of, like you have a wide range of options for this, right? Um, while seeing the results, uh, you, you obviously don't want to shoot in the dark, right? So you need to see the results. It's extremely important. Uh, so knowing exactly which metric you need to track for your content marketing strategies and to see whether they are working or not will really help you recalibrate your strategies. And, you know, you can always rework your strategies because of this one tool, because you know which metric you have to track. So you need to be extremely clear with the metric. Um, so for example, uh, if you want to look at the number of people who are clicking on your website and um, then seeing how many of them are actually going and making a purchase, these would be great metrics to start off with. Another great metric would be that if you want to see the number of people signing up for your course, because that could define how effective your marketing strategy is. And you could also track the number of people who are coming back for your next course, because then you'll know that did it work? Were you actually able to give some sort of value addition? So knowing exactly what you have to track and how you're going to measure the success of your content marketing efforts, it becomes very important. So each of these questions, they'll not only help you define the goals of your business, but they'll also build um, this strategy that you can use uh, for each of each of the documentation will help you uh, in any campaign that you launch. Like it can be any sort of social media campaign or a marketing campaign, but each of these questions will tie it back and align yourself that, okay, I, I, can, I can't deviate from this. If you are running a marketing strategy that is giving a different perception of your brand than the one that you want, you shouldn't do it and you should probably just change it to realign it a little bit here. So these are some of the things that, these are some of the, um, elements that you can get from answering each of these questions. So when you ask yourself, uh, what information, what do I want my customers to do with the information that I'm giving them, you can use that to define your CTA. Uh, and if you if you want to, if you've documented how you want your customers to perceive your business, that will define your tone of voice and how you will measure the success of your brand, that will define uh, how, which platforms you'll be choosing. So when you document uh, what you want your customer to do with a certain information, it can help you draft your primary CTA 
CDA is nothing but a call for action, which is a clickable link or something that draws attention uh, to any of your marketing efforts. Uh, so if you want a customer to opt for a demo, like the example that I'd shared, uh, you will write the words request uh, for a demo that you want them to click, right? So this is, you can adopt your CTA once you've defined this in a very easy manner. Of course, these CTAs can be many, like as long as you are answering this question properly, you can come up with 10 different sort of CTAs that you can use for different marketing campaigns. And uh, the way you want your brand to be perceived will be your tone of voice. So every blog that you create has to follow that tone of voice. Uh, for example, if uh, your tone of voice can't be formal, if you are uh, selling jewelry and if you are selling engagement rings and all of that, you can't have a very formal uh, tone of voice. But if you're a luxury brand, then you'll also not want to be very approachable. So you'll have to create that aura that, uh, okay, this is a luxury brand and you know it's, it's meant for... Um, an elite crowd and all of that. So you, you probably have to put yourself, you have to place yourself in a position uh, where you relate to that sort of an audience. And um, finally, if you want uh, e-commerce, if you have like e-commerce plugins on Instagram, that will help you choose your platforms. You'll be choosing, if you're selling something and if you want to see the number of sales that you're getting, you'll choose a website, you'll choose um, Instagram's only when it has the e-commerce plugins as your platforms for your content marketing distribution. The next point is how you will identify your target audience. Now, in this point, you have to put yourself in the shoes of your customer. You're no longer looking at it from the business's perspective. You now have to switch to your customer's perspective. And here you'll ask yourself four questions. The first one is uh, how are the, what are the pain points of your target audience? The second one is if your customer was a character, how would you define their traits? The third one is how would your audience perceive, uh, I mean, how, would, do you, how do your audience like to receive their content? And the fourth one would be which platforms are your customers most active on? So going over these one by one, uh, what are the pain points of your target audience essentially means that what does your, ta what does your target audience need right now that you are solving? For example, if uh, your target audience is a wedding photographer, who, um, I mean, your target, you are a wedding photographer and your target audience are people who are about to get married. The pain points here would be that your uh, target audience is trying to choose a wedding photographer, but they could need a lot of different things. They could want a couple of photos within one week, which is quite difficult for photographers to do, or they could want someone that fits their budget. So these are their pain points. These are what they need. And how you can stand out is by addressing the pain points. You can say that, okay, we'll give you a couple of photos within a week so that you can share them with your friends and family. And maybe we can work out a budget. So when you um, put these pain points across first, like you, you can stand out from your competitors, right? You don't need to say, that, say this when you're in the sales part. You can use these pain points to market yourself that this is what we do. So that even before they come to you, even before they speak to you, they already know that you are offering these things that they need. The next question is when you will ask yourself if your customer was a character, how would you define their personality traits? You have to define um, what age group they fall under, um, what are their interests, um, where do they go, where do they shop, all of these things based on your business. So um, take, for example, it's a gaming company. And so your target audience could be a younger crowd, maybe 20 to 35 years of age. And their ideal and your ideal customer at this point would be someone who has a good work-life balance, maybe could be a student. And these people enjoy gaming, right? So um, by defining a target audience, you are not limiting yourself. You are just saying that majority of your customers will fall within this band. Uh, and that will help you get greater uh, a greater reach and greater leads as well. Uh, and this will help you put, your, uh, put yourself in the shoes of the customer and see how you can connect with them. So the next question, which is how does your audience prefer receiving content will be if someone hates reading, there's absolutely no point in writing these blogs, long blogs, because they're not at all going to read it at all. So instead, you could create videos, you could create short form content, you could create uh, reels, you could go on TikTok, and that's where you can connect with them better, because they're not going to read anything that you say. So you have to understand that how do they prefer receiving content, because only then you will get to them and you'll be able to establish a connection. 
and uh, lastly which platforms are they most active on are they using instagram a lot or they or are they someone who just sticks to youtube or are they just not on social media at all which is when you have to go towards offline marketing methods so even over here i have defined what are, what are the elements that you can get out of these uh, your cta your tone of voice is all going to be very specific to each marketing campaign whereas what we're covering right now is the overall content marketing strategy that you will need to adopt for any client but through this um, through this one document you can derive any content marketing campaign based on how what your client wants to go and in which direction they want to go in. so over here um each of these questions will uh, help you build your campaigns in the future while you stick to a singular purpose so the customer's pain point that you solve is a great example um, of how you can define your cta so uh, say for example you have a beauty brand and you just say things like enjoy soft skin chemical free which could be a cta for a, for an organic beauty brand where the pain point of the customers is uh, you know that they want soft skin but they don't want these chemical infused products because that doesn't sit well so if you say things like enjoy soft skin chemical free they're like yeah this is what i want because you're identifying their pain points um also uh if you are looking at your customer's personality so if we are saying the like we gave the example of gaming platforms you will want to use the lingo that the gamers use you can't use really formal language because that is not even um something that your gamers or the target audience is going to uh, identify with so this can help you define your tone of voice and uh, the most active platforms where the customers are that is exactly where you need to be and of course don't go for the content um format that the customers will not relate to like don't go for videos if your audience is not into watching videos now we'll move on to the third point which is choosing your topic um before we go into choosing your topic uh you need to understand that choosing the topic has to be something that is extremely relevant to any business um so unless something is relevant to your business it won't make sense to you for uh, if i have to explain this with the help of an example um you could say that uh, you know the you have a very nice technology that you are uh, giving and you know you have uh, you have your target audience is a tech based platform right but if you just talk about any sort of tech it won't matter say for example if you have a smart watch you are the manufacturer of a smart watch and even though you absolutely uh, your target audience absolutely loves reading about tech you can't write about the tech that a mobile device has you know the latest updates that they have unless it of course links to your brand so keep that in mind that any content that you write has to be extremely relevant to your business or your brand uh and a good way to ask yourself uh, how you're going to choose the topics or which topics you're going to choose are three questions that you need to ask the first one is what feedback is your customer giving so um an easy way to do this or rather an example to do this is um that say for example you you are making these really nice pants really well fitted pants uh, but the feedback that you're getting is that your pants are so colorful that you can't find tops to go with it right so you're you're really struggling to match it or pair it with a certain top so sure um, an easy way to do something would be uh, you could generate content around uh, how to pair your pants with different uh, different types of tops or different types of accessories and all of that you could also generate user generated campaigns here where you ask the customers to share how they've styled the pants and that could be another campaign that generated from the uh, feedback itself now the next thing is um, what does your target audience enjoys enjoy reading so if you're a travel blogger you will probably see that a lot of your tar target audience loves it when you write about budget hotels right so if you're if you're talking about budget friendly hotels they're probably going to read it and if you're a hotel itself they'll probably want to see how they can spend time and how they can move around the uh, hotel and what they can do so that's something that they'll enjoy reading so uh, keep uh, keep an eye on what your target audience enjoys reading and uh, next is what are your competitors doing and how can you do more so um always when you're looking at a competitor don't copy just what they are doing 
you'll have to give your own flair you'll have to give them some sort of value addition so if you're a paint manufacturer and your competitors spoke about uh, how your customers can paint their homes and um, you can how you how can you add a value addition is by telling them that okay this is a guide on how you can make textured walls and make that one wall like a statement wall in your house and add an aesthetic corner so this way you're not exactly copying what they're doing but you're also adding a value addition by uh, giving a more of an aesthetic feel to your entire product now for the final touch which is bringing everything together um this is basically up until this point everything that we've documented will serve as a content marketing playbook now you have to use these different elements like i said the cta the tone of voice you have to use all of this to define your individual marketing campaigns so firstly you will have to from whatever we've documented in the previous three sections you will have to um create content buckets and you'll have to create categories content buckets are nothing but these categories that you've split into if i had to give you an example to explain this better if you have a fintech platform or if you had a finance platform uh, you'll need to separate uh, the personal financing section with the long term investment options and then maybe a guide to uh, trading in stocks this way you will be able to reach a much larger audience um, while guiding them to the specific section that they are interested in at this point while you're creating content buckets you can also choose the platforms um that you are interested in the next thing is that you will have to define your core messaging so no matter what your cta is your core messaging has to remain the same throughout you can't say that okay i want to be perceived as a very inspirational brand and then go and uh, you know just be say something funny or say something relatable that will not really make you look like you know you are an inspiration it may make you look something else it, it doesn't have to be bad but it will loosen that brand recall that you're trying to create and the last thing is of course the tone of voice which will have to come together and which will help to create that one identity of your brand so the moment they take the name of your brand they'll have that one e emotion that is being evoked and that is your tone of voice so all of these put together needs to remain absolutely consistent in everything so if you are if you are making someone speak in a video and then in the very next video you're using animations that may not sit well when you're trying to create a brand recall because it is a sort of disconnect they were your customers were expecting to see someone say something to them instead of just watching an animated video video or just reading text from the video so you have to maintain that consistency throughout and um, of course at this point uh, i will also like to add that a lot of marketers prefer experimenting so um, then the whole point of remaining consistent becomes contradictory but um, the marketers prefer experimenting only to assess which type of which type of content does better but when you have to start once you've identified what is working and what is not then you have to stay consistent so uh, the whole experimenting phase happens much before when you're trying to uh, assess and you're when you're trying to answer all of these questions so now these are uh, some of the platforms that uh, through which i mean we've already uh, distributed content and uh, i'll just give you a few examples of when you should use which platform or which channel to distribute content email marketing and new newsletters are basically used for uh, when you already have customers when the customers already know about you then it makes sense to send them an email because they're more likely to open it because they know that oh yeah i've shopped here before and that's why they're sending me an email uh, or b2b sales also does really well um, in both of these email marketing and newsletters are primarily just to create a brand loyalty and the customer retention so if you have any offers any referral programs this is what you should be using and of course b2b sales you won't find them scrolling through social media as such they either directly come as an inbound lead to your website or you can send them an email uh as for podcasts and ebooks uh, you'll have to obviously establish yourself as an authoritative position where you are taking up a leadership role and you're establishing credibility uh because these are long form content podcasts and ebooks usually take a long time so unless you're giving them a good value addition they will not invest your time so you should opt for these only when you know that the tone of voice that you're going for is thought leadership and website and blogs are great for seo and to keep your consumers engaged and for inbound leads as well so unless your customer is someone who does not like reading content you should definitely go in for websites and blogs and social media platforms are a great way to establish relatability and also to connect 
connect with your audience because it's such a fast platform and you can connect with your audience immediately you can respond to them you can comment you can dm and it, you can in, uh, interact with your audience right away uh, so i hope that this clarifies everything about when you should use each channel and uh, now these are some of the hacks that i have uh, gathered over my years of experience and i would uh, be absolutely honored to share them with you uh, so you want a mix of owned paid and earned media owned media means the media that you create so whether that's blogs or whether that is any sort of social media content you are creating it and you are posting it on your platform that means it's owned media as for uh, paid media paid media means when you pay for the ads when you pay for influencer marketing when you pay for blogs all of that comes as your um, paid media and earned media is when you don't spend on someone but it automatically comes to you and it automatically relates to your brand so when people give you product reviews whether that's on youtube or maybe just uh, you know on their own pages or when they give testimonials that is called earned media so a good mix of this is something that you should always opt for um, you can there are a lot of methods in which you can uh, you know try to drive earned media which we'll come to in a bit uh and then second the second hack is that you must review your strategy regularly and maybe tweak it just a little bit especially if you're not seeing the results that you wish to see uh, so the latest marketing trends um could you know change a little bit so whatever you are saying like especially in a place that's very fast moving like fashion it may not be relevant anymore so you may need to come up with uh, the latest content or maybe um, an external factor has affected you like say uh, the covid-19 pandemic or the lockdown has forced you to reconsider your content strategy so taking a good look at it regularly is always going to help you because it will always help you whenever you go back and look at it you'll always have fresher ideas and you'll also know what's working and what's not working and the um, third thing is repurposing content this is one of the most crucial uh, hacks that i've learned you always should repurpose your content and it may get very difficult sometimes to come up with original content which is why if you revisit your uh, popular content marketing campaigns and add a little bit of a twist uh, and maybe you know add a little bit of a value addition you can create an update and you can use it again or if there was a campaign that did really well you can always bring it back as you know version 2.0 and a lot of uh, influencers also do this all the time if they have a very popular video they create a second part of it and that's exactly what you should always do because that works and the fourth thing is that you have to reduce your customer journey so from the time uh, a customer has first seen your product or of course seen your marketing campaign to the time that they turn into a customer a paying customer that is called a customer journey and this needs to be as short as possible because that will help you generate leads fast make sales faster uh, and this can be achieved by establishing credibility all the time so you you can do this by saying that uh, you know if if a customer trusts you and if a customer is a repeat customer they are most likely to just you know download they know that they have the app they can just go select whatever they want if you have things like you know this is what you ordered last time they can just add it to their bag and check out and so uh, reducing the customer journey is a very important part of your content marketing plan and never use click baits i cannot emphasize on this enough because that will instantly ruin your brand image whatever you're trying to create always be very honest with your customer because customers are really smart and if you if you use uh, funny click baits they're not going to get it they just want to see value addition and these are some of the ways in which you can incorporate these hacks so like i said a mix of own paid and own media uh, can be through giveaways and contests it's a wonderful way to mix your own media and your paid media when you encourage people to give testimonials and instead you give them maybe say coins or a discount or anything of that sort but you're not really spending much except maybe giving them a discount but um, so that's why it's a mix of both but you are getting something in return which is much more valuable uh, and of course the next thing is that if you want to rework your content strategy regularly uh, then you must consider feedback because that is where you'll know where you're going wrong what is it that the customer is probably not relating to so you'll have to look, take a close look at the feedback and then accordingly rework your content strategy and uh, repurposing the content periodically can happen through open source content so maybe if you if you're giving something like if you're just giving them a piece of information and they really like it you can keep giving it again and again so that they keep coming back to you and they are hooked to your platform reducing the customer journey can happen through offers as 
as well because then they, if, if someone has already purchased or even if they're new and they see that there's a really good offer they are most more likely to just directly go instead of you know spending time on research and all of that and saying no to clickbaits is of course through very good headlines very interesting headlines and um I think like it's it's a very important thing to have very catchy headlines that are not very clickbaity. So you can maybe do something like you don't have to say things like uh, guaranteed returns or you know all of this when you don't intend to keep it. And especially you know when they have a small asterisk and then terms and conditions apply and all of this, it it really is not needed at all. Um, so always try to come up with interesting headlines and um, just stick. To the relevant topics and once you've documented all of this i think that you'll have a very clear perspective of um, the direction in terms of content that the customer will be taking uh, and yeah with this i would like to conclude this session but uh, i will say that content marketing is a really wide space and it's changing every day and i would love to share more of what i've learned throughout these sessions in the future and i sincerely hope that um, whatever understanding of the content marketing we've had has been enhanced a little bit today and i've tried to give a structure to the whole foundations of content marketing and thank you so much for joining me here and i would love to take any questions from you if you have them awesome i think buddy i myself have gotten so much to learn from you here like i'm going to apply all of those hacks you gave us i think that's like a deep dive into uh, your own marketing strategies uh, no wonder you're doing so well there so <laughs> Thanks a bunch. We'll just quickly take the questions in the chat box and maybe yeah. if somebody wants to hop in. We have some good questions here. Yeah. So um, Sunny wants to know, uh, since he's into content creation, uh, he makes promotional videos, e-learning content. So he wants to know how HubSpot can help him. Okay, um, so HubSpot has something for all types of marketers. So if you want to make e-learning content, then you could go on HubSpot and see how you can generate inbound leads. Uh, and you can also go and see how you can structure your entire e-learning journey as well. Uh, so HubSpot has many of these uh, uh, many of these step-by-step -step plans where uh, they tell you how to go how to use a go-to market strategy and I think that will really help you especially with an e-learning platform uh, where you'll understand how exactly you have to take your course out there to the market not just HubSpot there are a lot of other platforms as well that can help you with this uh, and if you use in fact if you use any all of what I've said you could do the same thing yourself as well awesome uh, Sunny if you're with us I hope that helps we move on to the next question. Uh, Basantan wants to know how to create content that exhibits a particular emotion. Okay, so if you want uh, to, um, you have to first identify the emotion. Say, for example, if you want people to feel emotionally connected in a way that, you know, um, if you have a product that's meant for an entire family, say if you have a car and you want to evoke the emotion that it's a family friendly car, then you can automatically, uh, you know, your all of your ads have to be around that. You have to say that, uh, keep your family safe, uh, take your family out for a trip, and you have to use all of these things. So when you identify an emotion, ask yourself that how would uh, you want to like how would you uh, evoke that emotion in yourself what can someone say to evoke this emotion in yourself and you'll get the answer you'll get these really catchy copies that you can create with it um, and you can use that as your uh, tone of voice awesome awesome great i hope that helps vasantan moving on to the next question luigi i hope i'm pronouncing it correctly wants to know what powerful tool or software aside from Canva, uh, can you use in marketing your products? Um, if you're talking about the design part, then apart from Canva, there are a lot of other platforms like Adobe and uh, Figma, but these are all very design heavy platforms. Uh, the whole USP of Canva is that anyone can use it, uh, but I'm sure that there are a lot of other platforms as well from a design perspective. And uh, you can also just use uh, normal photo editors if that works for you. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely recommend Canva because I personally have, I don't have a lot of uh, creativity when it comes to designing but i'm really good with words but canva has helped me design everything so easily as well because there are a lot of preset templates that you can use awesome i think that's very helpful uh hope this helps Vigi. um so uh i think kunal has posted a really interesting question uh from our team from the team at yeah. PepperConf. 
And it says, uh, what is the one thing that drives you to keep creating content? Something that helps you to come out of the creative block or helps you return to your processes? Wow, oh, that's a very interesting question. Thank you, Kunal. Um, so something that keeps driving me is that I have, I always have a very different portfolio of clients. So sometimes I have a client that's trying to sell a B2B SaaS product, which is basically just a software that they're trying to sell. And then sometimes I have someone that is um, trying to sell dairy products. So if I'm bored with one thing, I just go towards the next and I start, uh, you know, I start working on that because that just refreshes my mind and it forces me to think in a completely different different direction so and even even when you face a creative block don't try to force it don't overwhelm yourself give yourself a break and that has always helped me uh, just go do something that you really love go uh, you know fulfill your hobby or uh, go watch tv just be lazy if that's what you like and uh, a lot of the times I just go to sleep and you know when I wake up then I look at it from a different perspective another thing that really helps me get over a creative block or that really drives my entire content process is that I look at myself I just put myself as the customer and I just sit and think that okay if I was a customer and if uh, I really you know have, have what would make me really purchase this brand and you don't have to come up with a copy or you don't have to come up with the entire strategy at that point you just need to identify just pen down maybe three or five things uh, that you know you would do as a like you would like to see as a customer and leave it there just ponder over it for a while and then other things will just start coming to you awesome awesome I think that's a lovely insight um, do we have any more questions? Uh, all the folks out there, do, we have, do you have any more questions for Pari? Just giving this a minute. If anybody wants to post it in the chat box or hop on, uh, unmute yourselves. Feel free to ask anything if you want. Okay, I think we have Kritika who's connecting to audio. Hi, Kritika. Is there anything we can help you with? Uh, all right, great. So I think if you guys have any other questions, um, I will, when we post about this on our social channels, please follow us, follow Pepper Content on Instagram and LinkedIn, follow ADP List on social channels, and you'll be able to reach Pari on her uh, social channels as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's what we have for you today. Uh, stay tuned in the space. Uh, both 